welcome back to Economic Outlook. In my last video, we looked at some of the early PR gaffes made by BP CEO Tony Hayward. Today I want to look at the actual PR campaign Mr. Hayward released to the American uh, media over the last few days. This is another example of a CEO on camera who probably should have stayed off it. The Gulf spill is a tragedy that never should have happened. I'm Tony Hayward. BP has taken full responsibility for cleaning up the spill in the Gulf. We've helped organize the largest environmental response in this country's history. More than two million feet of boom, 30 planes and over 1,300 boats are working to protect the shoreline. Where oil reaches the shore, thousands of people are ready to clean it up. We will honor all legitimate claims and our cleanup efforts will not come at any cost to taxpayers. To those affected in your families, I'm deeply sorry. The Gulf is home for thousands of BP employees and we all feel the impact. To all the volunteers and for the strong support of the government, thank you. We know it is our responsibility to keep you informed and do everything we can so this never happens again. We will get this done. We will make this right. Okay, so let's take a look at some of the highlights from this video. First, Mr. Hayward begins by saying that BP is organizing the largest environmental response in United States history. Well, that's only fitting because your company caused the largest environmental disaster in United States history. And next, he claims that British Petroleum has brought in over 2 million feet of booms to try to stop the oil. The only problem with this is that the United States Gulf Coast has at least 8.5 million feet of coastline. So you brought in enough boom to cover approximately one quarter of the coast. And this is a very rough estimate. This doesn't even account for terrain features like islands or inlets or anything like that. Next, you talk about how you've brought in thousands of people to help clean up the spill. And you even throw in a picture of some laughing, happy workers cleaning, off, uh, cleaning oil off of a sick bird. Then you end the video by saying that you will make everything right. Well, let's look at some of the actions that British Petroleum has taken since this disaster began. In the early days of the oil spill, if you, uh, you probably remember, British Petroleum tried to trick local workers into signing waivers of liability, which would indemnify uh, British Petroleum against paying out large claims for lost wages and things like that. This was quickly stopped when officials uh, realized what was going on, but this was how British Petroleum began its efforts to clean things up and make things right. Next, British Petroleum decides to show happy volunteers cleaning off uh, a bird. And this ignores the complete and utter devastation to the Gulf of Mexico's wildlife. Fisheries have been ruined for years. Uh, the bird population is going to be utterly devastated by this. And the actual, uh, the food chain, the whole ecosystem is going to be damaged. So you can't even begin to quantify this right now. The, the worst hasn't even occurred. But British Petroleum wants people to think that animals are being cared for and that everything will be OK. Uh, another part of British Petroleum trying to make the situation right is by controlling the media message about what's happening in the Gulf. Uh, I covered on one of my previous videos how British Petroleum refused to allow scientists to measure the flow of oil from the broken pipe. And of course, the estimate is now that up to 20,000 barrels a day are flowing. And that equates to over 800,000 uh, gallons of oil. And one of the reasons British Petroleum tried to do this was that the fine for oil leaking is based on the number of barrels that are leaking per day. It's $1,000 a day per barrel. And so British Petroleum, by prohibiting scientists from measuring the true flow, probably saved themselves millions of dollars in fines if this information was kept quiet. Now additionally, British Petroleum is trying to prevent photographers from taking pictures of the environmental devastation. Uh, they don't want people to see images of sick animals or of ruined wetlands. So they're preventing reporters from taking pictures on flyovers, uh, and they're trying to restrict access to beaches for reporters who are taking photographs. So by trying to make it right, British Petroleum is really trying to simply control the message and, and do damage control. Uh, you have other things going on too. You have reports of workers uh, and volunteers getting sick while they're trying to, to clean up the oil and no one is sure what's happening. Now, this is something that you don't know what types of, of chemicals are in the water and people that 
maybe don't have a lot of training but want to try to help may not know the risks that are involved. And British Petroleum is not, isn't doing a good job of helping people and of necessarily protecting uh, the volunteers and workers. So when British Petroleum claims that it's mounting the largest environmental recovery in history, what they're not saying is that they're, they're probably not disclosing all the information they need to to volunteers. And in my opinion, they aren't doing enough to allow people to have access to actual factual information about what's going on. And then the most uh, sordid detail of all probably relates to British Petroleum's upcoming dividend payment. And one of the interesting things about this crisis, as I talked about earlier, British Petroleum has lost uh, $70 billion in market capitalization because no one knows how much this oil spill is going to cost eventually. And what this has done is make British Petroleum a possible target for acquisition by another large oil company, uh, like Royal Dutch Shell potentially. So British Petroleum and Tony Hayward and the rest of the executives obviously need to protect their positions uh, because if a takeover happens, they'll be gone, they'll, they'll be out. So British Petroleum now has to defend its dividend. And the reason they have to do this, if British Petroleum cuts its dividend, many institutional uh, portfolio investors will have to release their shares of BP when the dividend, which has been consistent for many years, uh, is no longer there. It's part of their uh, part of the income that they expect from British Petroleum. And so once this dividend is cut, the, the value of the shares decreases and the portfolio managers will probably have to get rid of a lot of BP shares. And if prices continue to fall, British Petroleum becomes an even more likely takeover target. And this ignores just all of the long-term problems and costs associated with this cleanup. So the overall future of British Petroleum is very much in doubt. And the reason Tony Hayward and British Petroleum are embarking on this public relations campaign is not to help the American consumer or to help the people of the Gulf. It's to cover themselves. They don't want to lose their jobs, their lucrative pay, and they're doing everything they can to hold on to it.